the iPod. You probably take it for granted. Come to think of it, you probably don't even have one. You probably have a smartphone that serves all the purposes of an iPod and then some. But did you know that the programming for the first iPhone was just a modified version of the iPod's programming? And did you know that the iPod dominated digital music player sales since 2004? And that it influenced the world of digital music players far more than the iPhone ever did? But just how did the iPod come to be? It began with Steve Jobs, the creation of Apple, and a little innovation. Or a lot of innovation. It depends on how you look at it. The iPod is a small, high storage space device that allows you to listen to music, watch videos, listen to podcasts, view photos, and more. Plus, you can do all of this at home, in the car, or on the go. Anywhere at all, really. The first iPod was released by Apple in 2001, but due to its price and its Mac-only compatibility, its sales were very slow until 2004. Between 2002 and 2004, Apple released three more versions of the iPod, and its sales gradually increased. In 2005, when Apple released a new version of the fourth generation iPod, sales for the product went through the roof. For years, Apple periodically released more iPods, introducing entirely new designs, including the iPod Shuffle, the iPod Nano, and the iPod Touch. The last release was in 2012. At one point every year, when a new iPod was released, the sales would grow exponentially higher. At the peak of the iPod's success in 2009, the sales gradually began to drop. While the sales continued to spike every year at each new release, they still climbed steadily downward. This was likely caused by the release of newer and more advanced devices like the iPhone, which was originally released in 2007 and improved upon in 2008. The iPhone was much preferred by the public over the iPod as, in addition to having the same ability to store and play music, the iPod could be used as a phone, access the internet, and access countless apps with as many functions. The iPod has impacted society in a variety of ways. The first and foremost negative effect that most people associate with the iPod is damaged hearing. People often think of how headphones are often turned up too loudly and damage people's hearing. But that effect has almost nothing to do with the iPod itself. That effect is purely human error. Most people don't think about the long-term consequences of things that seem small, like listening to your music loudly. Granted, strong arguments can be made that that is a flaw in the iPod, but there is another impact that exponentially outweighs the flaw of hearing loss. When people listen to music, they are known to often slip into a meditative state in which their minds are completely relaxed. This effect is beneficial to the mental health of an individual, as this relaxed state relieves stress by providing a person with a short vacation inside their own head. It allows for a brief getaway from one's problems. In addition, this is also physically beneficial, as low stress triggers the brain to release a hormone that increases physical health in a variety of ways. The iPod has had an ultimately positive impact on human progress. It was a truly revolutionary innovation, in that it was the first time that 5 gigabytes were able to be stored in such a small device. You could literally have over a thousand songs in your pocket. You might say, what about the iPhone? It can store music and do everything the iPod can, and more. The thing with the iPhone is, it is instant access to social media. When you have that kind of access, it's so much easier to get drawn into that sort of stuff. An iPod doesn't have the same access. It doesn't have the same functions as an iPhone. While I believe that the iPhone has a lot more negative effects than the iPod, I still recognize the fact that the iPhone has a lot of functions that make day-to-day -day life more convenient. We wouldn't have that without the iPod. The iPod made the iPhone possible. But that conveniency can also be a problem. People take that for granted and they get sucked into their iPhones. For example, say you want to know what the weather is like outside. You could easily stop what you're doing and step outside for a second, but odds are you'll just pick up your phone and check weather out. Wow. You just saved yourself a good 8 to 15 seconds.